Man, ever since the Protoss abandoned the Space Asylum, it's been a real pain in the ass trying to keep this thing afloat. <sighs> I wish we could go back to Earth. I wonder if Jimmy Kimmel ever got funny. Do you actually know what you're doing? You know, I'm uh, I'm just welding and stuff. You didn't actually fix anything, did you? I fixed Zetsu and Shufu's career. <laughs> uh. Who? Michael, there's an incoming object hot to your position. You better get to cover fast. Ow. Hmm, where did this come from? It just hit you a few seconds ago. Oh, it blacksmith. PlayStation Vita? Could this be the Oedo Blacksmith review for the PlayStation Vita? Did you make it past the intro? Good job, but it doesn't get any better than this. Anywho, Oedo Blacksmith is yet another game from Nippon Ichi Software, and as far as I know, it's the PS Vita exclusive in Japan. It came out November 27, 2014, and it's got a Zero D rating. And this is the Oedo Blacksmith review. Can you believe it? Oedo Blacksmith is an interesting concept. It takes place in the Edo period of Japan in a fictional town called Niruya. Niruya is a town that never sleeps. A place where outlaws hangity hop and a seedy joint where all kinds of adulty things go on. Like eating dango. And more dango. And lots of pounding. Metal pounding. It's here the main character, Soji, finds himself. Pounding metal and eating dango sounds like a pretty badass life, right? Well think again, cause old Soji boy got a bad case of I have a mysterious illness and I'm going to die at the end of the year. Not seeing a way out, the blacksmith accepted his fate and decided to continue to make small trinkets and blades until he met his maker. That was until he met a young fellow by the name of Yataro, who whisked him away to the local Jokaku. What is a Jokaku, you ask? Well, let's see how the game defines it. A store where ladies do various entertainments, hospitals, hospitalities, and services for you. You know, in the future, they just call them soap lands. What do I do with my hands? So Yataro drags you by the arm to the Jokaku, and after introducing the place and a bit about the girls, he tells you the most important part. The first one's free. Isn't that what a drug dealer does? Sounds like a drug dealer, right? At any rate, it's free, right? Can't be too bad. Let's see what we got here. The first is Kiyohana, a young looking girl with a signature side ponytail. But before we look closely at the girl, let's take a moment and break down her name. I think it's always fun to look at the names of characters in Japanese games and try to get the meaning of what the developers chose. And what do we have here? Pure, clean flour. Just a show of hands, how many of you said, not after I'm done with her? Disgust, gust, gust, gust. And as you can imagine from a name like Kiyohana, she is a clumsy yet cute girl that tries her best but still makes a lot of mistakes. Her innocence and cheerful demeanor are supposed to charm you. Too bad I hate happiness and success. Hey, but uh, nobody's perfect. Next up on the Nikutai Kaiten is Asaka. She's even younger looking than Kiyohana, and right from the get-go, Yataro tells you what she's all about. She wants that cold, hard koban. You know, the gold coin used during the Edo period. Asaka wants money, and pretty much puts you in your place the first time you meet her. Funny that her name translates to something like morning fragrance, because we all know what the morning smells like. Am I right? Like the tears and sweat from the night before. <laughs> I'm such a bitch. And coming up on the end is Yugiri. Her name means something like evening mist, which admittedly is a pretty cool name. But hey, my opinion is pretty much terrible. This reviewer has no idea the complexity of a name like Yagiri. It's disgusting how baka balls his chin chin lover is. It's so wrong I have a bad case of Gary. I hate him and myself. Hmm. Yugiri is a mysterious and quiet girl that isn't too good at her job of being a slab of pretty meat. It's more like she has no choice and she's really given up in life. So she is extremely relatable. And they try to paint her as the black sheep of the lot and that she has had a sordid past which has made her quite salty. After Yataro gives you a taste of each girl, 
he tells you that you pretty much can only choose one. For the first month you're able to try them all out, but eventually you have to choose one girl to see every 10 days. Naturally, I chose you giddy because well, I hate myself too and I figured we'd have a lot to talk about. And partially because I thought the game worked like this. Kiyohana was easy mode, Yugiri was normal, and Asaka was hard mode, because she wanted the Koban hard. And from what I read, it's not too far from the truth. Well, at least somewhat. Kiyohana does take less money in the end compared to the other two, but Yugiri and Asaka are equally expensive. So if you haven't guessed it so far, this game is about the coin and that sweet, sweet woman's partnership. And actually, if you look at the Japanese genre of the game, it pretty much makes sense. Money and women, huh? Sounds like my YouTube career. True story, bro. Well, now that you've got a girl and a story to pursue, let's look at how you make your money. I'll try to explain it as best as I can. O Edo Blacksmith is basically made up of mini games. There's the first one you might encounter, which is the Forge. At the Forge, you create weapons and small trinkets to sell. With weapons, you have a chance to strengthen them and sell them for more. This is where the mini game comes in. In it, you tap circles that appear on the type of weapon you're strengthening. Depending on your timing, you'll get a better result on the right hand gauge. The frequency these circles pop up is a result of how hot the weapon is. But you can't just keep heating it up and pounding it off. No, you need to temper it in some water to lock in the strength. There are two levels to get to, pure and ultimate. Once you get used to doing it, pulling off an ultimate isn't too hard. And you too can join the ranks of the Lords of Pound. Naturally, you can't keep beating forever. You need material too. And that is where the very light RPG minigame comes in. As you progress in the game, you get Yojinbo to help you with this. Your apprentice, Kana, a samurai named Nanmaru, and the doctor treating you, Hitoi, are all the starting ones. But later on, you come across the Kunoichi, a Ijin, and the federally required Kitsune Mimi Maiko girl. You guide your Yojinbo crew across the dungeon to search for spots to mine material. But you can only carry so much depending on your crew. Each step or action takes part of your team's morale gauge as well. So every time you get hit in battle, it takes from the same gauge. Which means you have to be careful in where you go and what you do. Because if you run out of morale, everybody packs it up and just goes home. Though you do get items that can replenish morale, ultimately time is the most important thing you have to worry about. Each stage has a boss as well, so uh, in order to move on to the next level, you gotta take them out. While it's pretty light in its RPG mechanics, it's actually surprisingly fun. It's probably the best part of the game. Pro tip, make use of your Yojinbo special abilities, and you can also run away from any fight at any time. Not that I ever did, because I'm too hardcore. Bunch of there's also the town. This is where you get requests from people, which lets you make more money and get more notoriety. Notoriety in conjunction with the points you make at the forge will move you up in your blacksmith rank. The better the blacksmith, the larger variety of things you can create. You'll also be able to meet your Yojinbo and get a chance to get closer to them in town. While at town, you can check out some random events, which depending on the outcome could affect your luck among other things. You might help out a small child and get a reward by a negligent mother, or pay some street rascals dango, only to have them skip out on you for no reason. There's also a gambling house, which I didn't go into much because I didn't find it all that fun. Being a lord of pound at the hot forge can take a lot out of it, and the town is where you go for a walk to get some relaxation. The lord's work is never done. It's actually pretty important to take a rest because it'll affect the amount of times you get to work in the forge. Rest is important. Man, now it makes sense why 80% of the people watching this don't make it past the first three minutes of the video. So for the few of you that have made it this far, I have a special presentation. Dango. 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 Well enough about my crippling depression, let's move on to the meat of the game. So after you start going to see the girls, they start to open up to you. You know, they start to come out of their shells, and after about the third visit, you get yourself a free wanky and spanky. And in comes another mini game. I use the term mini game as loosely as the girls do their clothes. The reason I say that is because I really don't see how you can fail it. Basically, this is the only real interaction you have with the girls as the player. No choices in what you say during the dialogue or anything like that. Just awkwardly poking at them while they moan in pleasure. So it's extremely relatable. 
You have to fill up the hard gauge to get to move to the next part of the minigame. It isn't too difficult if you know your way around a lady, and I know you all do. So what's next? Well, rubbing, of course. In the preceding flirtation part, you get 30 seconds to rub off all the outer layer of their clothes, revealing more of an image of their form. And it's not really that interesting for a chad like myself, but some betas might like it. If you completely rub it off, they'll let you relive these moments in the gallery section. Then it's kind of rinse and repeat until you pay for the final visit. After that, they give you the rest of your year to fulfill the final conditions. I finished the game there, but later found out there are actually three different endings you can get. There's a bad ending, a normal ending, and uh, a happy ending but that cost extra. To be honest, when I first started this, I was a little worried this would be a repetitive game. Like, really repetitive. However, I didn't really feel that. The main reason for this is because of how quick you get through each 10 days. It becomes really addictive. And managing your health condition while trying to get enough cash to pay for the ever-increasing fee to see your Hime was really enjoyable. The boobs are whatever, but I actually like the story. Which I don't want to get into too much because I don't want to spoil it for you. At least that's what I'm required to say, you know, so you don't judge me so hard. Overall, I like Duetto Blacksmith. It's pretty much a bunch of mini games and opai, but I found them pretty cool. And the sense of urgency of trying to make enough money and time for the next date adds a great bit of tension to the game. Oedo Blacksmith is a good game for the PS Vita, and I'd recommend it to anybody with a good grasp of Japanese language and a dictionary. So go out there and pick it up and make the Koban rain. Every time I talk to you, my organs cry. Ugh.